What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm Mike, this is the Ultimate Tech Hub. Thank you so much for joining us, I really appreciate it. So today we're gonna to talk about Cat 6 wall fishing, but not the fishing itself. We'll talk about the steps before you wall fish. I already get videos here showing you how to wall fish, running wires through walls, crawling around the attic without falling through the ceiling, all that good stuff. <laughs> So after this video, watch those videos. So today is four or five steps to prepare for the wall fish. Now the reason I'm making this video is because in those videos, I had a ton of questions about, hey, how do you prepare for it? How much cable do you buy? All that good stuff. And I don't mind answering comments, but I thought I'll make a video that explains it all. That's good for you and definitely good for me. So guys, four or five steps before you wall fish to save you time, money, and keep you safe. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, step one, location, location, location. Which room or rooms will you drop those Cat6 wires into? Bedroom, an office, maybe a den, a dining room, living room, a kitchen, maybe even a garage or backyard patio, or how about a bathroom or a front door? What if you want to hook up a ring doorbell with a PoE connection? Security cameras, maybe even as well. So write all this down on a piece of paper so you'll know exactly where you're going to install these Cat6 wires. All right, guys, step number two. Now that you know which room you're going to drop these wires into, now you got to pick a wall. And this is probably the most important part of this process is getting the correct wall. You want to install these wires in an interior wall only. You do not want to install these on an interior exterior wall because they'll be fire stops. So make sure to find the right wall for your wire locations. And I want to add one more thing about the wall location. You want to make sure these wall drops, wire drops, are near devices you're going to use. Like a TV, gaming console, maybe a computer, a desk. So that's also something you want to consider. All right, step number three. How many lines do you drop in the wall? How many ports do you want per wall? Well, there's a rule of thumb here that I always follow. If you're going to do one, at least do two. Does it make any sense to drop just one wire? Go ahead and drop two wires, and I would recommend three. You could have two ports coming out of the wall, and behind the wall have a third line just sitting back there. You can use that for more wire fishing to bring more wires down, or a backup in case one of the wires fails. All right, step number four. Where are these wires gonna meet up at? They all have to go to one central location. Now, most new homes, or the last maybe five, eight years, they built these network panels in homes either in a closet, maybe a laundry room, or a garage. But don't panic if you don't have one of these. Just make sure to run these wires to the room where you're gonna have your modem, your router, and your switch. All right guys, step number five is the formula to determine how much cable you're gonna need for all your wire drops combined. Here's the easiest formula. What you're gonna do is measure your ceiling height. Ours is nine feet. Multiply it times two for 18 feet. Now you need to walk off the distance from each room to that cable box, network box, or where your modem is going to be. You can walk it off with your feet or tape measure it. So for instance, for us, we have nine foot ceilings times two is 18 feet. We'll round up to 20 feet just for a little extra uh, cushion. We walked off already from our cable in here into the room where we dropped the cables into for our modem. That's 25 feet. So total, we have 20 and 25 is 45 feet. Now, we have two lines, right? So we dropped two lines in here. It's actually not 45 now, it's 90. So think about that. Now I say you drop three lines. Well, it's not gonna be 90, it'd be 135 feet. You get how that works? So you wanna use your ceiling height times two and then the span from your room to that network panel location or your modem location. And multiply times the number of runs per room if it's two or three or four. Add that all together then you can go to the store and buy the correct box of cable. All right guys, step number six. Let's talk about the type of cable you wanna use. I always use riser cable, Cat6 riser cable, because it's flexible, easy to bend. However, they make Cat6A, which has that little plastic spine inside. It's more uh, rigid and it's better actually for interference. It's just, it's faster speeds. The bandwidth high, is higher on that. But I still think Cat6 riser cable is a solid choice we're going around corners. It doesn't, it's pretty durable, it bends. You can bend it easily, easy to work with, 
easy to terminate. So I recommend, if you're gonna do it, just get Cat 6 riser cable. You can get Cat 5B, but it's only gonna cost you 10, 15 more dollars for 500 feet versus the 500 feet of Cat 5E. So why not go Cat 6, future-proof your house, and you're good to go. All right, guys, step number seven. I know it's a little bit more than I intended. This is the last step, I promise you. This is about going up in your attic and crawling around the rafters. Uh, I wanna discuss the safety issue. Guys, if you're not comfortable going in your attic, just don't do it. Hire a professional to do the wire drops in your attic. I don't recommend doing this if you have any kind of reservations, just don't do it. However, if you're not, if you're comfortable then going up there, it's fine. Just make sure you be careful on the rafters. If you fall, if you don't walk on a rafter and you go in between rafters, you're gonna go right through the ceiling, through the drywall. And you could fall through, you could break your leg, break your neck, just be careful. Also, there's wires up there already, so be careful of the wiring that's already up there. Uh, also, do these wire drops in the morning or late night, if, especially if it's hot outside. Uh, you know, our attic gets to be 110 degrees, and that's like in April. In May, June, July, August, we will never go in the attic. It's way too hot. So do these in probably the spring or winter time. It's the best time to do these drops. Be careful in your attic. Be careful. Be careful. Take it slow. Go easy in there. Don't take it. Don't try to go fast. Take it slow. Okay. Take your breaks to come back down from the attic. Get some fresh air. Up there has insulation. Uh, always wear a mask up there. It's just good safety practice. I would recommend that. Also tell somebody you're doing this in case you do fall through the attic. Uh, you know, you have someone to call and they can call them for emergency, you know, to get an ambulance or something like that. But you shouldn't need to worry about that. Just take your time when you're in your attic. Also, when you go in your attic, for instance, open it up, look around, make sure you've got plenty of light. It should be a light in your attic. And bring a flashlight or a large light that you can kind of shine everything on so you can see what's going on there. And assess the situation of, of areas you can walk into because some areas you can't get to because the rafters are low. So make sure you know that before going, you drop any into any walls, you have those ideas of where you're gonna go. That's that simple. So guys, we're all done here. That's it, seven steps. I was gonna make it five, but I wanted to add a couple more there. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I wanna encourage you to visit my Patreon page where $2 a month helps keep this channel going and it really does help. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And guys, remember, if you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it. If you love it, hit subscribe to keep this channel alive. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.